time. Thor. Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and today I'm here at Copter Shop in Woodenville, Washington. And today we're gonna be reviewing something called the Inspire One by DJI. It's actually a very, very advanced drone or quadcopter, whatever you prefer. Now, if you guys hadn't seen our previous video, we reviewed this little guy. This is the Phantom Two by DJI. I think you're gonna be a little impressed with just how far things have come. Stay tuned. All right, so guys, here we have the box with the Inspire One on it. And the first thing that I noticed right around here in front is that it says ages 18 plus. Well, we're gonna go ahead and modify that for my sake. Let's go ahead and just cross that out. We're just gonna go ahead with old 35 plus. There we go, all right. This is a serious piece of equipment, guys. I just wanna stress at the beginning of the video that this is not a toy. But it, it's totally a toy. So we gotta open up this big old box. Luckily for me, I brought a knife. I have not sharpened bat knife yet, so there's a good chance I could be critically injured. Ugh. But it's okay, we have EMT on standby. Not really. No, 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 bat knife, bat knife! No, 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 bat knife! Ooh. Ooh. See what we have in here. Inside of the box is a case. It's like Russian dolls. All right, let's uh, get this guy out of here. All right, that'll work. All right, looks like we got some cardboard to protect it. Peel that off, don't need any of that stuff. I'm tired. So one thing I noticed immediately as we take out of the box, you actually have a nice case. Look at this. It's actually got a zipper and everything. This is like ready to go on an airplane. Careful though, TSA might harass you. All right, we need to get a little mini barnacles in on this. I don't know who he's holding. He just picked this guy up at a truck stop somewhere. All right, guys, let's crack this thing open. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, bring it in. Bring it in. Oh. All right, guys. Well, here we have the Inspire One aircraft in its nice little carrying case. I'd like to iterate right now that the this is actually my personal Inspire One, so it has a lot of batteries. The flight time on this thing is very impressive at about 18 to 20 minutes, but you're gonna be pretty sad if you run the one battery dead that came with it and you have a lot more shooting to do. Now, another really cool thing about this aircraft over the Phantom is it comes with two remote controls. Now, that isn't this isn't for you and your friend to fight over the aircraft and see who can ram it into something first, but rather one is for piloting the aircraft and the other one is actually for monitoring and operating the camera, which is fantastic because one of the hardest things as a drone pilot is being able to keep the thing from flying into the trees and staying on your target. Another thing that you'll notice, each one of these actually comes with a control carriage for like an iPad or an iPhone, pretty much anything. This thing expands to fit a pretty large tablet. You can get an iPad Air in there if you really, really want to. And both of the controllers have it because the pilot may want to have the GPS coordinates showing, which we'll demonstrate a little bit later. And of course the cameraman, he's going to want to see where the camera's pointing because nobody's that good. All right, so now we're going to pull the big guy out of the box. Come on, come on out of there. All right, and here you have the Inspire One aircraft. And you can see it's actually, it's got some weight to it. I'll tell you that, just coming out of the box, you're like, wow, how does this thing fly as well as it does? But that weight actually gives it an advantage because not only does it have a good power to weight ratio already, but when you're flying in stuff like wind and things like that, the weight actually gives it a marketable advantage over like the Phantom, which you know has a tendency to blow away. All right, so now we got this big boy out of the box. So let's see what else we've got in here. It looks like we have another little box here. Oh, it says it contains the manual. We don't need that. Uh, I'm just gonna look at that real quick. Man, this isn't in English at all. Uh, looks like we have some very thick looking sticker foam things. Uh, oh, it's insulation for the batteries if you're flying in incredibly cold weather. So if you happen to be an Eskimo or wear a parka, save those. All right, so I think I got this thing all figured out. Here we have the box that contains the camera. That's kind of the crown jewel of this aircraft because compared to the Phantom, this thing's able to do 4K in both 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second. And it can rotate 320 degrees and go around and look around and do all kinds of stuff that the Phantom can't. And that's, that's really what makes this aircraft shine for me. So let's open it up. Looks like we got a little, little pouch thing here and we got the camera. Oh, baby. So this, this, this is the money 
right here, this cool. And as you can see, it's a module that attaches to the aircraft, whereas the Phantom, it's permanently fixed. So in the future, theoretically, they could come out with much better cameras, laser beams, guns, grenade launchers, other things the FAA might not approve of, but I'll buy anyways. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna show you how to put the camera on this little creature right here. So the first thing that we need to do is notice that the aircraft is in travel mode. That means it's flat, basically, so it fits into the case. This thing has arms that articulate up, which I'm gonna show you here in just a minute. And so to get it out of travel mode, we basically have to figure out what the master controller is, because we really don't know. These look identical. So we have no way of knowing. So to do that, we power on the aircraft, just like with other DJI aircraft. You push it once and then hold on the second push, and it's gonna power up the aircraft eventually. All right, now to determine the master controller, it's literally just turn them on. So just, again, you gotta push it twice. And the reason why they do that is so that you don't accidentally turn off the controller in flight. Come on, there we go. That beep is really good. So this little LED right here that's red, we're looking for that to be green. Oh, look at that, I chose wisely. Well, if you turn that on and it's not green, try the other controller. And you may even wanna put a label on them because they do look absolutely identical. Okay, so now we gotta take this thing out of travel mode because obviously we're not gonna be able to hook up this modular little camera to it and that's gonna be a problem. So to do that, we just come over to this little guy right here and there's a switch and you just wanna move that up and down about four times. Oh, what's happening? I think I just got the Inspire one a little excited. All right, the next step, which might not be incredibly obvious, good thing I read the damn instructions, is you have to power it off before you put this on there. Okay, come on, power off. Power off, come on. There we go. So now it's safe for us to put the camera on. The reason why you wanna do that is because if the aircraft is powered on when you put the camera on, it might get in an arm wrestling match with you and you don't want that. That's bad, that's a bad day. Now I love how modular these little camera modules are because they, in the future they can create better camera modules that can go onto it and, and you know laser guns and turrets and machine guns and grenade launchers and all that cool stuff. So what we're gonna do is just take the protective cap off here. So we just turn that little thing to unlock it and then this little protective cap comes off. And then we're gonna take the little protective cap off this guy right here, just like so. And you're gonna to wanna to keep those protective caps because there is a lot of exposed circuit boards and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, it's never a good idea to rub those around in the dirt or, you know, and I don't run around with wool socks on the carpet and stuff while you're handling this. Just, you know, common sense people. All right, so there's a little white line here that you gotta line up with the little white line on here. And gotta talk sweet to it. Come on, come on, let me, let me go in there. Okay, thank you. And then turn the collar and boom, Skynet is born. So at this point, now we have the aircraft with the camera on it. So the next step is we need to put propellers on it because this thing cannot fly without propellers. And it's beyond my comprehension why. Come on, DJI, seriously, get it together. All right, guys, so this comes with two sets of propellers because DJI is almost certain that you're gonna break the first set. All right, let's take us some propellers out of this box here. Now, one thing you'll notice, these propellers are actually gigormous. If you compare these things to the Phantom propellers, these mean business. So let's go ahead and just take out four. That's all we need. And you got a spare set. Now these propellers actually come with these little device locks to hold the blades on, because this thing has so much torque that DJ found out some, sometimes it can rip its blades off. But they fixed that. There's some locks, and they're even sending out a spare set of blades that have integrated locks on them. So contact DJI if you don't have those, because you, you, do, you don't want your blades flying off this thing. It's far too expensive. All right, guys, so now we're gonna put the blades on, and you can see they're actually color-coded. You can see you got the little black domes on these, so of course those go on the little black thread here. So we'll go ahead and put that on there, and then just spin it until it's, you know, fairly tight. And then we have the ones with the silver on top, and you just match them up. And the cool thing is they're threaded differently, so despite the colors, you still don't have to worry about putting them on the wrong way unless you spin them so freaking hard that you cross-thread it, and in that case, you're just trying way too hard. Ta-da! We have all of our blades on the aircraft and this thing's looking ever so more ominous by the minute. All right guys, so if you do have the locks, you definitely wanna install these little guys so that you don't have a little accident. So and these guys just go right over the top and clip into the motor housing. And that's gonna prevent you from having a bad day. But remember, contact DJI if you didn't get the self-locking blades because they are giving out a free set of self-locking blades so that you don't have to mess around with this stuff. Before we fire this thing up for the first time, because it's pretty much ready to go, I just wanna show you what is left in the box because this is kind of an unboxing video after all, so it'd be pretty neglectful if I didn't. So inside of the box, you have two of these little micro USB cables for connecting your controller to your Android-based tablet. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with the lightning connectors for your iPad or your iPhone. You have to use the one that came 
with your iPad or go to Apple and pay them some ridiculous amount of money for a cable or just get one really, really cheap from China. But pretty much you have to have your own lightning cable. All right, digging right in here. This is pretty cool. It actually comes with this other little proprietary cable here that allows you to connect the controllers to the batteries in the field. So this is another reason to have more of these batteries available because you can charge the controllers off them using this little cable. I think that's fantastic. I wish more devices were like that. Ooh, what do we have here? It looks like we have some spare parts. You have some shock mounts for the camera. And it looks like it even comes with a little tool for opening paint cans. Just in case you ever want to paint your, you know, your aircraft, you, you got a little paint can opener in there. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, the paint can opener can also be used for tightening up the little controller holder. I mean, but paint can. All right. It looks like we have a little piece of paper here that's uh, written in some language that I do not understand, although it does say Inspire One. And uh, I think it's, it's signed off saying that somebody said this isn't going to explode and burn your face quality control people. Oh, and another cool little trick guys, if you go get a little file recovery program like Recova, I'll have a link down in the video description. You can actually restore the memory card that comes with this thing and see the first pictures that it took in the, in the factory. Yeah, DJI, low level format next time. And of course, here we have our extra sets of blades. Those are very important. And last, but certainly not least, you have the harnesses. And these are for holding the controller onto you. And I'm not gonna lie, they're a little bit awkward to put on. You never put on a strap on before? I've never put on a strap on, dude. Jeez. What is this thing even for? This is a strap on. This is this is a critical piece of equipment to be able to fly your drone. There. Oh well, that's close. It's pretty close. No. It has to cover the tits though. There. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, you uh, see, it kind of needs like a little bit like. Wait, is this adjusted or? Wait, I think that you'll want to go like this, right? What? The logo's supposed to be up. I think. It is. Yeah. No, we're good. I think that looks good. I think we're ready to go. Wait, where does this go? Well, that one goes between your legs. You're joking, right? No. Oh, geez, you broke it, Jerry. No, I didn't. It's a clip. Okay. So the good news, Jerry, is you actually have two pieces here. Okay. Um, you're wearing it a little bit backwards. I'll help you a little bit. It doesn't actually strap between your legs. Um, what we'll do is this piece here actually goes on your back, oh. in the center of your back, and it will actually sling over your shoulders like that. Like this? Exactly. Ah. So now once it gets into a comfortable place, how's that feeling for you? I mean, it's okay. It looks a little tight on your shoulders. So tell you what, I'll have you hold this for a second. Actually, I'll put this down. So what we'll do here, ooh, ooh. What? Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Um, what we'll do is adjust these straps up a little bit for you here, and we'll get this all straightened out. Now I you'll feel notice- like I owe you lunch or something after Well, this. it'll be a nice dinner, preferably a steak dinner later. Okay. Now what we have here is we have the strap adjusted, and uh, camera guy coming here a little bit closer. You'll notice the DJI printing on this is actually facing up. That's the way the strap wants to be. And Jerry, if you want to turn around for me here. Oh, I'm a model now, look at that. You'll this. notice the strap is facing up in the back. So DJI facing up in the back, logo facing up in the front. You look like you're ready now to add the second part. So what this is, is this okay, is the, the front part of the harness. Okay. And what's gonna happen is down here, you have a couple of hooks here. Okay. And you're actually just gonna hook it in there like that. All right. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here on this side. We're gonna hook it in like that. Oh. So now it should sit okay. and it should kind of pinch your nipples together like that. Perfect. Okay. Kind of perfect. I've never felt more sexy than I do right now. Okay. That you look you look fantastic All on right. that. Now it's a little loose on you still, so we'll tighten it up a little bit because okay. we want this to be fitted. So does it feel comfortable? Does it fit you well? It does. Fantastic. All right, so as you guys can see, that's that's a little bit awkward. Make sure you're very, very close with, with the friend that's helping you with this. That's all I'm saying. Also, just so you guys know, it does only come with one harness, even if you get it with both controllers. So make sure you order an extra harness if you don't want your friend to be huffing and puffing following you around. All right, well, now that I got my strap on, I wanna show you guys just a couple more things about the aircraft before we fire it up. One of the really, really cool things about this aircraft and actually subsequently why it costs so much is it's equipped with something called Light Bridge. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with that technology, it's basically a proprietary wireless technology that allows this little guy to get out 4,000 feet away from the controller and still have full control of the aircraft line of sight and also broadcast video. Now, just to give you an example, in this little clip I'm showing you, we actually got the aircraft out 3,300 feet away and we ended up kind of piddling in our pants a little bit and brought it back because we, of course, didn't want to risk losing it. But it was absolutely amazing that we were able to get out at that distance and I was still able to control the camera while the pilot was still controlling the aircraft. And that really makes this thing insanely impressive, seeing as with a DJI Phantom, you might get out about 1,500 feet on a good day, completely rock on, locked line of sight 
and this just blows it away. Now, another really cool feature of this, guys, is if you look on the bottom of the aircraft here, you can see this little array. And it's actually radar and a camera that it's using so that when you're flying inside of buildings, and yes, you can fly this thing indoors. I don't know if I'd recommend chasing your cat around the house with it. But what it does is it uses that radar and it uses that image of the ground to orient itself when, it's, when it can't access the satellites. Because if you can't get to the GPS or the compass is being affected by things around it, like signals and metal and stuff like that, it gives it one more piece of telemetry to keep itself stable. So if you want to do any kind of indoor aerial photography in like a warehouse, or it's some kind of a music venue or something like that, that gives this thing a markable advantage over the lesser craft. All right, guys, well, here I have one of the iPad Airs connected to the controller. You can see it's on the bracket here on the back, which is nice. Now, one thing you want to be careful with with these brackets is they do tend to have some problems with getting loose. So you do want to pay attention to how tight that you get that screw, but don't overly tighten it because you can break it. So just be mindful of that. Right now, we're just putting it in its most furthest back position, which is pretty secure. Now, here we have the DJI app right here. And once you open the app, all you do is you click on the little camera guy right here. And we already have the aircraft on and sunk up to the controller, hence the little green LED here. And you get a lot of stuff. The first thing I'm going to say is this app is incredibly comprehensive. There are more settings in this thing than most operating systems on computers. So we're not going to go into great detail in this episode, but there is going to be a follow-up part two to this video where we're taking this out and field testing it. And in that video, we're going to give you a really good demonstration of all these features and how they work. All right, so right here we have the aircraft state. It says right here, it's got the latest firmware on it. I think it's cool that it tells you that it has the latest firmware and always update your firmwares because they're always doing things to these things to both make them safer and easier to operate. All right, so the first thing that we have on here is that the status light is blinking and it's actually blinking in concert with the actual light on the aircraft right here so that if the aircraft is a distance away, you can see what the status of the aircraft is without looking at it. You also have the compass. Now the compass is actually the, the little magnetic sensor inside of it that orients it so that if you don't have a GPS lock or it'll work in concert with GPS to keep the aircraft very, very stable in flight. And to calibrate it, you simply push the calibration and you follow the steps. So right now the flight mode it's in is ATT which stands for attitude. Now what that allows you to do is have full control of the aircraft and it's not going by GPS. So you're literally flying it like it's one of those little manual drones, which gives you a lot more confined control, but it also can put the aircraft in a lot of danger if you're not an expert. So I recommend using like the GPS lock modes until you're used to it. All right, the next thing we have here is RC mode. Now this is really cool because you can actually map the controls, not only on the master controller, but also on the slave controller for the camera, so that you can basically get all of the settings tuned to exactly what the operator wants. So different people that are piloting aircrafts using different layouts can become instantly comfortable with your rig, and that's important. It also tells you what the aircraft battery percentage is. Right now we're at 58%. You can also see that information displayed up here on the top while you're in flight. Now it's really cool because it gives you tons of information here on your signal quality, your signal strength from your controller. You've got, I mean, tons of stuff, your GPS lock, your mode that you're in. So there's a lot of data that's always shown to you when you're operating this aircraft, which is very nice. But you can also go into depth by diving deeper into these menus. And then of course you get the aircraft temperature, which is something that's actually new to me. I haven't seen my Phantom actually show me what the temperature of the aircraft is, but I'd imagine that that has an effect both on battery light and flight characteristics. All right, and then of course you have the RC battery setting, which tells you what your battery charge is on your remote control. And then last but not least in this initial aircraft statement, you have the remaining capacity on your memory card, which is also important because if you're recording video, you need to know how close you are to running out of space. And you can also format the memory card on here too. Now that's a little bit scary to me, but at the same time, it's a nice feature to have, but you don't want to lose, lose all your video. But in the event that you do format your card, try using an undelete utility like we talked about earlier to recover. It. All right, so here we have the camera on the aircraft pointing at the back wall and we're getting a live feed from it. Now, normally what I would do is I would have a second operator using the slave controller to control the camera. But in the event that I just want to operate it by myself, I have that luxury. Now we went into the configuration settings and modified it so that I can operate the camera on both axes by myself. So if you look on the remote control, we have a little knob here that goes back and forth and we have a little button that's on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just rotate it using that knob. I can move the up and down. I push the button and now I can move side to side. So if I want to frame something up like the copter shop logo, 
I can do that while I'm piloting the aircraft. I never have to take my fingers off the stick, which is really, really clever. And the cool thing is you can actually take control of the camera while the slave controller is operating it too. So you can use a combination of both people to get the shot that you want. All right, another cool thing is if you want more control over the camera, we have a little exposure knob right here. And you can see as I rotate it, I can actually get more exposure, less exposure. I can make my picture look any way that I want. And the sensor in this is actually capable of 12 megapixels. So you do get a nice, clear and crisp picture. So when you're shooting video, you also have the ability to do 4K at 24 frames per second at low compression. You can do 30 frames per second at a higher compression. Or if you drop down the resolution to 1080p, you can do 60 frames per second so that you can do some high speed video. Now, if I click the little function button over here, I get uh, all of my image settings. So if I want to do a four by three or a 16 by nine, I can also change my image format. If I want a JPEG, a RAW, yes, RAW. That's actually a really, really good thing for a lot of people, especially if you use Photoshop. Uh, RAW images allow you to basically re-expose re the image as if you took it because the sensor is taking that RAW data and it gives you a lot more control as a photographer. You also have the ability to change the video size. Of course, you can do 4K, just like I said, in 24 and 30, but there are a lot of settings in here. It's actually very, very nice. And of course, you've got you know more advanced things like setting your white balance, color, you even got some style things that you can do. But I'm imagining that most people that are shooting video with this are gonna post process it much like we do. All right, so the last thing that I'm gonna show you in this video before we take this thing out in the field in part two is the slave functionality that we've been talking about. And you can see right here, we have an Android device connected here and we have an iOS device connected here. So you can mix and match them, it doesn't matter. Both apps are very, very capable. Now on this one, we have full control over the camera. As you can see, I'm moving it on this screen and this screen. So this one's piloting the aircraft and this guy's moving it around. And I actually have full control here. Let's go ahead and frame up Copter Shop there. And you can actually move the camera both side to side, up and down, and tilt if you want to. But there's a lot of functionality in there that you can tweak with to make it easier to shoot. So if you want to disable some of that functionality so that you don't accidentally use it, you can do that. If you want to change the layout of how you control it and how the sticks manipulate the camera, you can do that. And that's really, really important, especially when you're shooting with a lot of different people. Check it out, indoors, this thing is incredibly stable and surprisingly quiet for what it is. And kids, don't try this at home. Yeah, being able to control the camera is, is pretty cool, guys. Ta-da! Video. If you guys are interested in buying this aircraft or getting one of the Phantoms, or you even want to come in at just a small little entry level little proto at $30 and kind of get your feet wet, you can head on over to coptershop.com. I actually have an affiliate link down in the video description. When you use that, it helps out the channel. And I also just happen to have my own cool little page over there. All right, guys, well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this aircraft or anything else or any of my other videos, go ahead and leave them down in the comments or better yet, come over and tweet me. I am at Barnacles on Twitter. And if you have a more specific technical question, Question, hit up the Copter Shop guys. They're at Copter Shop on Twitter. They are very, very friendly. I promise they haven't kicked me out of their business even once. All right, guys, till next time. Oh, I just realized I didn't turn off my microphone. You're welcome. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter, I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs>